hope you have heard me say that I love you guys. And you are the reason that I get up in the morning in winter when it's cold. When it's cold in my office, when it's cold outside and I'd rather be in bed. I get up and I come and I live and I work and I worship here because I love you and I want to see you becoming. I want to see us becoming, becoming more like Christ, becoming made more into his body, being shaped in and for the service of this and the wider community. Remiss was my hope for the book of Lamentations when I bugged Kelly for space all that time ago. It was not for us to spend a dreary few weeks or to place us in the distress of Jerusalem and our world and country and city for no reason, but for us to become and to grow. <laughs> because this is my great joy when I look out on you. And I'm annoyed because I thought and believed and felt that we were growing together as we walked and worked through this hard gift of the Book of Lamentations. I'm annoyed that I can't see your faces. I'm annoyed that I can't hear your questions. That I can't see your heart wrestle as you think about and wonder about and try and fit what is true and right and good from this book into the what you see in your life and how you serve and live God. But I am excited for this book and for us because it helps us to become. And sometimes it takes a few adjustments for us to have that happen. And hopefully you have watched that video of the deputy and her boss, where he gives, she gives him these glasses to allow him to see colour for the first time. And these glasses won't correct everything in his world, but they will help give his brain a better picture of what is being seen by others and what is really going on. And these things strike him, these colours so bright and bold and vivid. And you see these tears stream down these man's face because he's never really expressed colour like this before. And if you hung around to the end, you see him call his wife and cry and say how he can't wait to get home to see her. How he will be able to finally see this fuller scope of everything that she is. Because now he fully gets to see her. What he knew in his head, he will now be able to understand with his eyes and his whole heart. And this was my hope for us as we walked through this book of Lamentations, that it would help us and help correct our eyes and our vision to the world around us. As we realize that we can live in this world of pain and promise, we are matured. As we figure out how we will do this and how the character of God fits into this, we grow to understand and love him more. We have been made as we realize that we can hold both anger and hope together. That we can express rage and doubt and fear and frustration and not to be wary of the God that we serve. We are matured as we realize again and anew that God's hope invites us to a good picture, but also encourages us to go and walk out. We are matured as we realize that we can have a true and honest relationship with God, as God himself leaves space open for divine hospitality, as he awaits our tears, as he is big enough to carry our burdens, to shoulder our pain, to hear our doubts. We are shaped as God's people and we are matured and made into his body as we realize all of these things. So now five weeks in, how is your appetite for lamentations? Having read through it now a few times and heard our hearts if we have spoken to you and as you've heard my heart of what it, I hoped it would grow in you and us, how is your appetite for lamentations? Is there anything becoming in you? Is there anything becoming in us because of this hard work we have done in this book? 
we are not done. In the last four weeks, we have walked through the pages and the poems. And it may have seemed haphazard and non-linear to you as we began in one and then went to two and five and three and bits of four. And now we're back in Lamentations 3. But I hope and I am sure that you have heard our heart as we poured over and asked God and his Holy Spirit to find ways to help our vision to be corrected. That we would see the full picture. That we would have this clear view of what it means to be God's people who can sit and be comfortable and lament. Reading from Lamentations 3, 37. Who can speak and have it happened if the Lord did not decree it? It is not from the mouth of the Most High that can both calamities and good come. Why should the living complain when, they're, when punished for their sins? Let us examine our ways and test them and let us return to God. Let us lift up our hearts and our hands to God in heaven and say, We have sinned and rebelled and you have not forgiven. You have covered yourself with anger and pursued us. You have slain us without pity. You have covered yourself with cloud so that no prayer can get through. You have made us scum and refuge among the nations. And all our enemies have opened their mouths wide against us. We have suffered terror and pitfalls and ruin and destruction. And streams of tears flow from my eyes because my people are destroyed. My eyes will flow unceasingly without relief until the Lord looks down from heavens and sees. What I see brings grief to my soul because all of the women of my city, those who were my enemies without cause, hunted me like a bird. They tried to end my life in a pit and threw stones at me. The waters closed over my head and I thought I was about to perish. And I called on your name, Lord, from the depths of the pit. You heard my plea. Do not close your eyes to my cry for relief. You came near when I called and you said, do not fear. You, Lord, took up my case. You redeemed my life. As we look at today's passage, we see a few things. Through this corrective lens, Throughout the book, we continue to see all sorts of new things. Some that are uncomfortable and some that are good. I see this call to confession. Again and again throughout the book, there is this call for us and the people of Jerusalem and God's people to come and be penitent, to repent and to confess. And we can easily do this because of God. And I am so thankful for the gift of Christ where we can come and say, I am sorry. And we are forgiven and welcomed back and re-enfolded into God, into family and into forgiveness. And this is part of that correcting and reminding lens of Lamentations where we see our choices and our values and our actions in the way that our lifestyles empower darkness and destruction in the world throughout this this book and the five poems there is this realization that says i had something to play in this if you remember the six dollar kmart shirt from the very first book the very first sorry the very first sermon in verses 40 and 42 it says this let us examine our ways and test them and let us return to the Lord. Let us lift up our hearts and hands to God in heaven and say, We have sinned and rebelled. And you have not forgiven. And we can agree that we need to come before God in confession that our sins and our actions do play a part in the world and how it's worked out around us. But we can struggle with this feeling that God has or hasn't forgiven us. We know that he has. But for the lamenter and for the nation of Israel, where it felt like nothing had changed, 
How could forgiveness come if nothing has changed? How can forgiveness come and how can they be reunited with God when the world around them is still broken and busted? There seems to be nothing that is made new here. But I think this is a correction for us. It is a correction of the book from the book of Lamentations to see that while God is faithful in his mercy towards us, that not everything is by magic corrected when we come to him and ask for repentance. That there are still the actions and follows on from our sin. Lamentations helps us understand that in confession, not everything is fixed. That there is still an unraveling. And I think this correction comes as we have a casual relationship with confession and a casual relationship with God in the sense. We come before him and we cry out and our sins are forgiven and our world and relationship is made right with him. And my world moves merrily along its way. But the consequences aren't always felt by me and often they are not seen by me. So I can continue again. I can continue again to sin and come back and confess and be made right with God because I don't truly feel or look or understand how those actions are echoing and rippling out from what I do. I am in a big pause in this myself at the moment. I am under a big pause because it seems like my whole life is under the microscope. How my actions affect and affect those I have relationship with. How the choices I make around my lifestyle unravel into the rest of the world. How the plastic that I use finds its way into the oceans and kills turtles and does all sorts of other awful things. I can come to God and say, God, I am sorry. And I confess my sin here. I confess my sin of consumption and laziness and uncaring for the world and the creation around me. And look, I'm using using bar conditioner and shampoo. God, look, God, forgive me. But until I realize that there are still consequences that go on from my actions, nothing will change. Lamentations shows us that we need to be people of not only confession, but of repentance. That our world may change as our hearts are changed. I think we need to spend time and examine our ways and test them and return to God and lift up our hands and hearts to him in heaven and say we have sins and we have rebelled and in the playlist there is a song called we will run to you this week can I encourage you to sit with it and the power of the Holy Spirit and examine your ways and test them To hear the voice of God and his spirit. To lift up your actions and your heart and say, I have sinned and rebelled and feel forgiveness. But also no repentance. Lamentations and confession teaches us that we need to learn how to live in a better way. To choose to live in a better way before God and to relate to others as we become more and more aware of the outcomes of our own choices, the outcomes of our own actions and our own sin. Lamentations leads us to be a people of not only confession but of repentance. It is the action of reorientation away from ourselves and towards God, his kingdom and his values. And in this continued reorientation, I am being remade and restored and renewed. And we are being reconnected and matured to be more like Christ, to become more like his body. This is a blessing of a new lens, of having our sight corrected. Lamentations shows us that we need to be people 
confession. And throughout the book and in our chapter again, we see that throughout Lamentations, we are encouraged to be people who have empathy and connection one with another for the plight of not only ourselves, but for that of others. If you look at verses 47 to 51, the lamenter says this, We have suffered terror and pitfalls and ruin and destruction. And streams of my tears flow from my eyes because my people have been destroyed. My eyes will flow with unceasingly without relief until the Lord looks down from the heavens and sees what I bring brings grief to my soul because of the city's women. The lament, lamenter sees not only the destruction of his home, of his space, but of his whole city, of all its people. And we often struggle what to do with that. We struggle what to do with the immense pain of others. We struggle to do what to do with the immense pain of ourselves. And if you have watched Brene Brown's video, you will understand what I'm going to say next. And if you haven't, please go and watch it. It's in the playlist. Because Brene Brown is a lot cleverer and more uh, concise than me. And in this conversation she has around empathy, she expresses the difference between empathy and sympathy and how empathy is feeling with others and how that empathy fuels connection. We are called to be God's people who are united together, drawn to in to be a body. And a part of that is being empathetic. Lamentations teaches us this. It shows us this because we realize that pain is more than me. Pain can be over a city and over a people, over families. And it gives us framework and something to do with it. It gives us ways to grieve with and for people. And if we fail to lament with and for others, then I say to us, we fail to connect with and for others. If we pretend that pain doesn't exist in our own lives and let no one else see it, what does it mean for those who have pain and cannot help but express it? Are they weak? Are they less? In Paul's book, in his letter to the Ephesians, he talks about the body being made and grown and matured. And he talks about these parts that need special care, these parts that are the most vulnerable. And at times, all of us are going to be the most vulnerable. Sometimes it will be me, and sometimes it will be you. And if we are to be and are being made as God's gathered people, we are to know and love and care for each other in this very deep way. In this, we must be honest. We must share our hurt and our anger. We must cry over other people. Our eyes must flow unceasingly with grief at what we see. We must share our hurts and our angers and our disappointments in our very hearts. Perhaps not with the whole of the church, but make sure you're doing that with someone. Small groups are a good place. And perhaps we are afraid because we have never seen it modelled well. Perhaps like Brene talks about, we have been taught sympathy rather than empathy. Perhaps we have heard in the voice of others and from our own lips, at least, at least. But together we can walk this road towards empathy. Together, we can walk this road of lament one with each other because I don't know about you, but I can make nothing right. And in being able to make nothing right, it can be easily to isolate myself away from others, people who, in their pain, I feel helpless. But to be in lament and to journey gives us place and space to climb into the hole and to say to others, I know what you are feeling. I know what it's like down here and you are not alone because none of us are exempt from pain. 
and none of us are exempt from grief and none of us are exempt from hope. As we learn to sit well in lament and pain, we learn to trust God more and relationships with one another grow. Lament shapes us more and more so to be God's people, to grow in unity and love together. This is the example of the community of God caring for each other in vulnerability and in love, but also in faith and hope. As we walk through our passage, we see verses 55 to 59. I call upon your name, O Lord, from the depths of the pit, and you heard my plea. Do not close your ear to my cry for help, but you called near when I called on you. You said, do not fear. You have taken up my cause, O Lord. You have redeemed my life. As we hear each other's voices, as we see each other's pain and lament, not right now, as we join our households and our neighbourhoods and our cities in prayer and in tears and in hope, and in hope, we can walk along each other towards healing and peace as we live of people sure in faith and sure in the hope of God, that we can be sure that when we call on him, that he will come to us, that he will take up our cause and that he will redeem our lives. And when one of us cannot, the other can. Throughout the little letters found in the backs of our Bibles, there are 13 that are Paul's. And in these letters, he's encouraging these new churches that he has visited, some that he only knows as pen friends, and all that lamentation encourages us to be. Paul encourages these little and growing churches to be faithful in knowing God, in understanding who he truly is to trust his character and his love and his grace and mercy and forgiveness. Paul encourages people to grow together in unity as they care for one another, as they weep and strengthen one another. Paul encourages people to grow firm in their foundations so they know with what power that they serve. And it's not just in Paul's letters that we find these encouragements. You would have read the same thing in 1 Peter from our reading list, where we are people who are shaped and suffering, but called to a certain and sure hope. You see, the book of Lamentations is not just something for the Old Testament times way back then for a specific people in Jerusalem, but for then and for now. It is a call and a correction and an insight to be God's people in pain and suffering in good times and bad, to have these hopes reassured in our hearts. We are called to be people who are made righteous as we confess and as we repent, as we see the actions of our sins and we take steps to make them right. We are called on and to become God's people unified one with another as we learn compassion and empathy, as we weep with one another, as we see and share our pain and grief, and as we hold each other up in hope and in love. And we are called to be people of faith and hope as we hold ourselves and our nation and our world knowing that God is unswervingly faithful, knowing that he is making all things right. I asked Kelly for space and time to look upon the book of Lamentations because I believe that in it we would find maturity and growth, that we would be made righteous, that we would be unified, that together we would be people of hope and faith because we have seen the worst of this world we know what to do with it and we know him who is faithful to be in it and among it 
I can't wait to see how Lamentations grows you and grows us together. Let me read a prayer from Paul from the book of Ephesians. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, that he may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation that you will know him better. I pray that eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you and the riches of his glorious inheritance and his great power for us who believe. The power which is like the working of his mighty strength, which exerted in Christ when he was raised from the dead and seated him at the right hand of the Father in the heavenly realms, far above all rulers and authority and power and dominion, not only in this present age, but also in the one to come. My prayer, my hope, is that in Lamentations, the eyes of your heart will be opened. That you will know God's great love and faithfulness. That you will know his invitation and his acknowledgement of the pain and suffering of the world. That we may know and may know maturity in our faith. Maturity in our body. And the hope of Christ in our hearts. I can't wait to see us becoming. I can't wait to see you guys again. <laughs> <laughs>